The Department of Injustice was thrilled to announce the convictions of three Christian pro-life activists. Like many defendants, Jonathan Darnell, John Marshall, and Jean Marshall, excuse me, and Joan Bell had their Sixth Amendment rights violated when the DOJ put their case in front of a partial D.C. jury. All three defendants were found guilty of federal civil rights offenses. The DOJ argued that, quote, Marshall and Bell are among a group that forcefully entered the clinic and set about blockading two clinic doors using their bodies, furniture, chains, and ropes. Once the blockade was established, Darnell, who remained outside the clinic, live-streamed their activities on social media. The evidence also showed that the defendants violated the FACE Act by using a physical obstruction to injure, intimidate, and interfere with the clinic's employees and a patient because they were providing or obtaining reproductive health services. But Article 3 Project's Mike Davis is debunking the DOJ's narrative and pointing, pointing out the hypocrisy in this tweet by saying, quote, Outrageous Biden DOG and DOJ imprisons Christians praying outside of abortion clinics, but gives amnesty to paid abortion activists obstructing justice by threatening and intimidating Supreme Court justices and families in their homes and trans terrorists destroying Catholic churches. He wasn't alone. Independent journalist Julie Kelly also weighed in by saying, quote, this makes eight total pro-life activists. The 80-year-old Clinton-appointed judge, Colleen Collar Codely, has ordered into immediate custody following a conviction. When I tell you there's something very wrong with these D.C. judges, believe me. Now, it's important to understand why U.S. Attorney Matthew Graves took on this case. Not only is Graves extremely partisan, but his own wife is a radical left-wing activist. Fatima Goss Graves is a BLM and pro-choice radical activist. And if you take a look online, you'll uncover plenty of videos of her screaming and acting unhinged. She, is also, she also runs a radical left-wing nonprofit which advocates against abortion restrictions. So it makes sense why her husband is prosecuting her opposition. And joining us now to discuss all of this is the founder of the Article 3 Project, Mr. Mike Davis. Uh, it's a great day for uh, Mike to join us because there's lots going on and related to the Department of Justice. Uh, Mike, I do want to pull up a tweet that you brought up. You said, Dear at Judiciary GOP, haul in the Civil Rights Assistant Attorney Kristen Clark, U.S. Attorney Matt Graves, and the FBI's David Sundberg. Make them explain why they are selectively enforcing the FACE Act against nonviolent elderly Christians protesting at abortion clinics while ignoring violent abortion industry activists and trans terrorists attacking Catholic churches and pregnancy centers. Then zero out all FACE Act funding until Biden leaves office and zero out the salaries of Kristen Clark, Matt Graves, and David Sundberg. All right, uh, Mike, we've seen uh, the attorney general on the hot seat today, but you note a lot of very important names at the DOJ that actually implement this agenda, right, and policy and really make it happen. And you think they, too, need to answer to Congress. Yeah, there's no question that uh, President Biden has politicized and weaponized his Justice Department to go after his chief political enemy, President Trump, Trump's top aides, Trump supporters, uh, January 6th defendants who, uh, while they ignore BLM and Antifa, rioters who are a lot more deadly and dangerous. Like you said, they're even going after Christians praying outside of abortion clinics and parents outraged at Loudoun County School Board meetings because Loudoun County Schools is covering up that there is a transgender rapist and they moved this young boy from one school where, she, where he raped a girl to another school where he raped another girl. So uh, the uh, Merrick Garland sick the FBI after those parents. This is a politicized and weaponized justice system, and it's time for House Republicans to use their power, both their oversight power to haul in all these bad actors, Attorney General Merrick Garland, Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco, Associate Attorney General Vanita Gupta. Um, uh, you have Matt Graves, like you said, FBI Director Chris Wray. This uh, Washington field office, special agent in charge of the FBI, assistant director of the FBI. There are so many people they need to be that House Republicans need to be hauling in. They need to be getting their documents. They need to be getting their deposition testimony. They need to have public hearings that they need to zero out their budgets through the Holman rule, zero out their salaries through the appropriations process. It's time for Republicans to wake up. It's time for Republicans to uh, get tough. 
You know, uh, uh, the, the Senate and Republicans in the Senate voted for a, to confirm a lot of these people. I remember so much concern about Lisa Monaco and Kristen Clark from uh, people in Washington, D.C. that were at the D Department of Justice then when their names were floated during the transition period uh, to come into the Biden Department of Justice that was incoming. And I was warned that this is exactly how it would be what we're seeing now. Um, Attorney General Merrick Garland, Mike, was asked about some of uh, this targeting of obvious targeted, targeting of Christians today as he testified in front of the Oversight Committee. Um, let's take a listen to the moment when Garland actually seem to break during the hearing, and then I'll be interested in your take, Mike. So let's take a listen first. Attorney General, through the chair, I ask you, do you agree that traditional Catholics are violent extremists? Okay. I have no question. idea what, your, what the traditional uh, means here. The Catholics, idea, let Catholics me just, that go I to church. Your, may I answer your question? Yes the idea no. that someone with my family background would discriminate against any religion is so outrageous, Mr. so absurd. Mr. Attorney it's General, it was your FBI question. that did this. It was your FBI that was sending, and we have the memos, we have the emails, we're sending undercover agents into Catholic churches. Both I and the director this of the is, FBI the, have said the that we were appalled, FBI. have said that we were appalled by that memo. So then you agree the that FBI, they're not extremists? We were appalled by that memo. Are they extremists or not, Attorney General? I think that are they extremists or not, Attorney everything General? Everything in that memo is are appalling. Are they extremists or not? I'm asking a simple question. Say no if you think that was wrong. Catholics are not extremists. No. Was anyone fired for drafting and circulating the anti-Catholic memo? You have in front of you the inspection uh, division's investigation. Just tell me yes or no, please. I don't know. We have the no answer. time. I don't know the answer to that. He had a really hard time saying no, and. And as if he thought they were extremists, Mike. Yeah, I mean, he can go up there and have his crocodile tears on TV, but it's very clear that President Biden and Attorney General Merrick Garland have weaponized the Justice Department against Catholics. There's no question about it. They give these trans terrorist and abortion activists amnesty when they're torching and destroying and desecrating Catholic churches, terrorizing little old ladies in, in Catholic churches like they did out in Seattle, yet they're gonna throw the book, the FACE Act, and put, put uh, ca Catholics and other Christians in prison for praying outside of abortion clinics. They, they led abortion industry activists, they cheered, cheered them on for months, terrorizing Supreme Court justices and their families, obstruction of justice with these intimidation campaigns before and after the Dobbs decision. It's a violation of 18 U.S.C. 1507 Merrick Garland and uh, uh, Biden's White House press, press secretary both incorrectly said that this is protected by the First Amendment. It is not, you do not have a First Amendment right to obstruct justice by intimidating anyone outside of their home, let alone a federal judge while a case is pending. Uh, that has d deadly consequences. We had a federal judge's house doxed and her, her husband killed, or her husband seriously injur injured, her son killed in her in their house, Judge Esther Solace, right? Her, her husband, Mark, and her son, Daniel, right? This is a dangerous game that they're yeah. playing, and Attorney General Merrick Garland should resign. He's a disgrace. Let me ask you real quick, uh, since it's the topic, another topic of the day, we just talked with Russ Vote about the continuing resolution versus holding the line. You, you often reference the power of the purse that Congress has, and, and you call on uh, House Republicans specifically to use it. So where do you stand, Mike? Do you think they need to hold the line and, and try to defund or, or, or cut back the spending of some of these agencies like the DOJ, or should they go ahead and do a continuing resolution? You know, it's amazing that we here we are at the eve of the final exam and then House Republicans claim that the dog ate their homework and they, they can't study for the final. They had all of August. Yeah. They've known this deadline's coming for how long they had all of August, but they took six weeks off for the high holy month of August recess, the, the you know, the most grand holiday in Washington, D.C. Uh, I would say this. I put out a Fox News opinion piece on this. House Republicans need to cut spending to pre-COVID levels and they need to include appropriations writers to defund these uh, politicized and weaponized uh, law enforcement actions against Trump, his, his supporters, his top aides, these, these Christians yeah. praying outside of abortion clinics, these parents at school board meetings, they need to defund transgender surgeries 
on minors and prisoners. There's a whole whole long list of things that House Republicans need to do. And if Senate Democrats and President Biden want to go against the will of 65 percent of the American people, let them shut down the government. Who gives a damn? Mike Davis, always good to talk with you. Thank you.